covered the campaign for decades, uh, both of these candidates. New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd. She has a new book out today called The Year of Voting Dangerously, The Derangement of American Politics. Maureen Dowd, it's great to see you. <laughs> We've been on the road together a lot in years past, and I have never seen a campaign like this. And we just heard Kellyanne Conway in the same interview saying that she believes Mr. Trump has a right to privacy, that candidates have a right to privacy, but why did Hillary Clinton lie and not reveal her pneumonia? So those are two, I believe, internally inconsistent points. Well, Andrea, um, we started together when we were 25 covering <laughs> a really bad murder case in a suburb of Washington, and we have seen a lot of crazy things. But I think we're about to go through the craziest 57 days that either of us have ever seen. And we've got one completely out of control candidate and one candidate who is so tightly controlled she causes all kinds of problems for herself. And neither of them are transparent. I mean, Donald Trump is a fabulist, and Hillary is a dissembler, so. And when you talk about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, you, in your book, you say in the year of voting dangerously, you write, we are watching the most epic battle of the sexes since Billie Jean King faced off against Bobby Riggs, which I, I just love that image. The former first lady and the first woman ever to run for president as the nominee of a major party is going up against a thrice married rat pack reality TV star who still calls women sweetheart and rates their racks. Well, it's really interesting because for centuries, women were considered biologically and temperamentally unfit to hold higher office or to vote. And so now in this campaign, we see a candidate who, you know, gets feelings hurt very easily and is sort of gossipy and pouty and tends to get hysterical and, you know, lots of hair care concerns. And it's not the woman in the race. And the woman in the race is very, um, you know, keeps her emotions in check to the point where people want her to show more emotions and, uh, you know, wears dark suits and is very kind of taciturn. So a lot of role changing here. How much do you think gender plays a role in this whole health care issue? Before the, the incident on Sunday, the whole creation by Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump and all of the conspiracy theories, uh, she's weak, she's frail, she's not tough enough when she's enduring an incredible campaign schedule. Right. Uh, she called you indefatigable, and I think she's indefatigable, and I, I agree with Axelrod. I'm not worried about her health, I'm worried about her stealth. But one of the first times in the book I, t I interviewed Donald Trump and he was playing with different nicknames that he was going to use on her and, and one of them had to do with her stamina, which I didn't understand because I think she's got great stamina. But the alt-right part of their uh, conspiracy theories about her health has been a gender-based thing. They're trying to act like she's the little woman and she's weaker than a man. But, um, you know, Politicians, as you know, one of the main things they're scared of, male or female, is being seen as sick, because that makes them think they're weak. Like when in Iceland, when Ronald Reagan came out without his overcoat, he was trying to seem strong, and Gorbachev wore the overcoat and felt weak. And, you know, my brother was a page for JFK on Capitol Hill a Senate page, and when JFK had his back surgery, my brother went to open the door for him, and JFK got furious and tried to have him fired because he felt so bad seeming weak, JFK did, around the Capitol. And so I don't think that's a gender thing. I think Hillary probably was especially sensitive about it and maybe is responding to these alt-right conspiracy things, but she shouldn't be. How seriously do you think she's been damaged by this whole health incident? Or well, is this just a, a, an interruption and it's an opportunity lost, days lost? I don't think the health thing is damaging at all. If, she, if it hadn't turned into a microcosm of the way she has handled things since she first came to Washington, like with Whitewater and Travelgate, where it's a microcosm of her problem, which is a relatively mundane problem, which she could clear up you know, Stephanopoulos said if she had just given the Whitewater Papers the Washington Post, it would be over in a week. Instead, it led to, what, seven, you know, independent councils and 80 million in taxpayer money. I mean, it's like 
what happens, the dynamic is she wants to wall off everything from the press, very defensive, goes into war room mode. Then her foes and the press go into a frenzy because they know there's something there, but they don't know what, but they want to know what. And then it snowballs into something so much larger. So that's what we saw play out here, and that's what makes people not trust her because they always feel there's something she's hiding, she's not on the level. Which is strange, because she's wanted to be president her whole life. So why not just play it straight? And do you think it's been fair, the treatment, the coverage? Um, I think because of this dynamic, she hurts herself. And I think, you know, she didn't have a press conference for almost a year. I think if she would be more open, then these bubbles wouldn't fester. And I think if she doesn't do that, it's going to follow her into the White House if she wins and just create problems for her later. And, you know, it's just good for democracy to be more open. And as you pointed out, the Secret Service didn't even follow protocol. Well, in fact, they deny that they were uh, not following protocol. They say it's up to the, to the candidate. If she doesn't want to go to a hospital, she doesn't That have seemed to. very dangerous to me, that situation. I don't know. Now, the book is The Year of Voting Dangerously, <laughs> and it is the, you know, the brilliant writing of Maureen Dow, The Derangement of American Politics. It is a deranged year. There's no question about that. Yeah, because I used to call political strategists to explain candidates. Now I call shrinks. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen Dow, thank you for being here. Thanks, Andrea. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.